So, you know, there's a lot of advice out there for ladies about what you should and should not do when you're getting to know a guy and dating and relationships and all that kind of stuff. And clearly you're on a channel that gives a lot of that advice, right? And I've come across things that sometimes I am in full agreement with. And other times I'm like, eh, I don't know about this. <laughs> right? and, and that's what brings me to today's video, which is this idea of never calling a man first. All right. Now, some of y'all may have assumed that that was my position because that was the title of the video. No, it's not. It's not. But I want to discuss this. I want to break it down because I understand there's a lot of you who agree with that. There's a lot of you who might live by that or tell your friends and family to, you know, female friends and family to do the same thing. And I think it's important for us to break down some of these reasons why this advice is given and why I think we need to look at things from a different perspective. Now, let me say the reasons I'm about to list, I had got from an article and forgive me because I forgot which article it was because I wanted to shop the person out um, and source it. But this, I actually wrote this down a long time ago and just forgot about doing this video. But now we're going to knock it out. So forgive me, but I'm going to go down some of their points and I'm going to give you my insight on it. All right. So the first reason that was given for a woman to never call a man first is because if you do, you'll never know when he would have called you first. Now, some of y'all be thinking, why is that important for a woman to know when he would have called first? Well, by what some people believe and what I believe I saw in this article was they had a certain level of like one to do two days means he's interested, whereas another set of days means this, you know? And so it, it gave this parameter of where he really stands with you. And I think like they even mentioned, if it's gone like seven days, well, then he's clearly not interested. So here's the thing. One, knowing when he would have called to me is not really relevant and important because there are other ways to expose how serious he is, how interested he is, okay? Now, I, I understand the premise. I get it because sometimes, like I, I'm, if I'm being honest, I've seen situations where, let's say a woman, especially in a situation where a woman may have give, given a man her number, as in she approached him or she initiated contact with him first as far as when they crossed paths, and she was the one to say, hey, here's my number. Give me a call, right? And in that instance, since we don't even know how interested he was in that moment because she had to be the one to give it, I can understand why, well, now if you call, you really haven't gotten, given yourself an opportunity to see where he really stands. Now, if we flip it, if it was, okay, he approached you or he asked for your number, because even if you initiate a conversation, but he was the one that went ahead and asked for the number, then I think there's less reason to now assume, oh, well, he may not be interested because he hasn't called yet. And I think we have to take into consideration the fact that, unfortunately, and I'm not saying this is the way it should be or anything like that, but the unfortunate reality is a lot of men are, the same way you're being told never to call that man first, a lot of these men are being told the same thing, okay? And... Their assumption is, especially if there was an exchange of numbers, because clearly if you, if you could call him first and you got his number, he got your number, then it's like, well, okay, let's see if she calls me. So he's doing the same thing you're doing, and I think all of it is nonsense. We got to be grown adults here. It doesn't matter who calls first. Someone needs to initiate. Now, yes, if I was speaking to the men, I would tell them, yo, don't play that game. Call her first. You get that number, hit her up. I would encourage them, hey, you got that number that day? Send a nice little text. Let, even if you're not going to have a conversation that same day, just a little text. Hey, pleasure to meet you. I'll hit you up tomorrow so we can talk some more, something like that. You know, but unfortunately, I don't get to speak to every man. Unfortunately, some of them have already been given this other kind of advice. And I just think it leads to a lot of misunderstandings and missed opportunities on both sides because we're playing this game. So 
And to go back to a point of if the if the purpose of not calling him first to see when he would have called is to gauge his level of interest, well, I think that you're going to get to see that as things progress. It's one, because again, because we have to understand that everyone has a little bit of maybe hesitation or being cautious when they genuinely like someone. Because believe it or not, the guy who doesn't really like you, right, could have no problem hitting you up. Let's say a man meets you tomorrow and he doesn't view you as potential wife, somebody he can be serious, but he's like, man, I want to tap that. I'm sorry I said it like that, but that's what that man might be thinking, right? He's like, man, I want to get that. So he might be on it. Like he might be hitting you up. He might be nurturing the situation because he's trying to make sure he, he gets what he's looking for. That don't mean he's serious about you. Just because he called you right away or texted you the next morning or sent you good morning text, that don't mean he's serious. What shows the man is serious is consistent effort. What shows the man is serious is when you discuss things with him, he's open to your feelings. When you address certain issues and concerns, he's willing to make corrections. That's when you see who's serious because let me tell you, the man who just wants to tap that, <laughs> okay, he is not as likely to do all those things as in make the necessary corrections, care about your feelings. Some guys will take it that far, but that's not the norm, especially in today's day where most guys who are just trying to have fun in their mind, want to, they want more for less, okay? So putting in all that effort is not in their game plan, so to speak. So that's where the true uh, evaluation of his interest will be, not on who called first and when. All right, so another reason that was given for why a woman should never call a man first is because you will minimize your mystery, okay? So the idea is by being more mysterious, you, you have more leverage, you'll, you'll be able to keep his attention more, you know, you don't want to give too much of yourself and all these things, right? And... This is one of those things where I genuinely believe this is advice that works on the wrong man and hurts you with the right man, okay? And I believe this to be the case when advice like this is given to even the men as well to a certain extent. But let's focus on you as the woman dealing, do, engaging in this behavior. So the reason why it works with the wrong man or I can work with the wrong man, is because, again, the wrong man is drawn to you due to what he wants to get from you, due to the, the challenge and the conquest of getting you. Um, you know, he's bored. Like, there's, there's reasons other than him genuinely liking you, him genuinely wanting to be serious, all these things. And so all this mysteriousness, playing hard to get, all that stuff can play into the hands of the wrong one or the guy who's just there to have fun because, again, it's already a game to him, all right? So, yeah, that feeds that hunter in him, so to speak. And listen, we live in a time where men ain't hunters like they used to be. I'm just going to be real with y'all. There's various reasons for that. But that's not really the mindset of a lot of men, of most men today. But again, the guy who's not serious about you, the guy who... And, and, and let me just say, it won't work with every guy who's wrong for you. Because again, some guys don't want to deal with all that. Whether they really like you or not. They want easy, they want simple, they want to the point. They ain't, they ain't trying to jump through hoops. However, it can play into the hands of the guy who just doesn't really care about you in that way. So it's it's... And, and even if it can get the attention of the guy who may actually like you, it, it can do so in a mysterious, I mean, not mysterious, I'm sorry. It can do so in an unhealthy way. Because what you have to understand is that mystery can create insecurity. What I mean by that is think about if you're dating a man. To a certain extent, him being mysterious can be intriguing, right? It can draw you in. But the more you like him, the more you're emotionally invested in this, right? And you're serious about wanting this to work. His mystery can start to cross a line where it makes you feel insecure because you don't know what the hell's going on. 
You don't understand what he's thinking. You, you know, it, lead, it puts you in a position to now start to overanalyze and overthink and come to jump to conclusions that don't even exist and now self-sabotage because it's driving you crazy. Well, guess what? That can happen on the flip side, which is why I say it's very likely to work against you with the right man because he's the guy who's more emotionally invested. He's the guy who is, by him really liking you and him being serious about you, he is going to be more sensitive to the things you do or do not do. So you being mysterious now makes him question, does she really like me? Is she really serious here? If he's ever been played before, Lord, he, he might start having PTSD and like, okay, well, the last one played me. I can't trust this. And he was serious about you the whole time. This is why it becomes dangerous. This is why I do not encourage game playing because at the end of the day, you don't have to play games with the person who's serious about you. You don't have to play games with the person you have a genuine connection with. You don't have to play games with the person who wants to build a healthy relationship. That person is going to value transparency. That person is going to value openness, not some mystery. The only mystery is let the mystery be a surprise party or a surprise gift. There's your mystery, but all this other stuff, no, that, that makes people feel very unsettled. Okay. So it is not to your benefit when you're looking for something real. But if you as a woman are out here playing games too, and you're just trying to have fun, that's a different ball game. It, it can work. It can but I'm not going to advise it. All right, so the next reason that they say a woman should never call a man first is because he may interpret that first call as an act of desperation. So this again, understand a lot of things, if not almost everything, is always going to be, it's going to fall on the line of are you dealing with the wrong man or the right man, okay? And... Let's put it like this. The wrong, let me give this example first, they're even better, okay? How we perceive things, how we perceive the action of others is very contingent on how much we actually like them or are interested in them, okay? What I mean by that is this. If you as a woman received 10 DMs tomorrow, right, and they all say, hey, beautiful, but the 10 DMs are from guys you are not interested in. They're not cute to you. They look all kinds of crazy. Like, no, you would not give them the time of day. You're going to perceive that hey beautiful as annoying, lame, weak, whatever. Okay? Shut it down. If guy number 11 sends you a message saying hey beautiful, <laughs> but guy number 11 looks damn good to you. Guy number 11 is a guy maybe you had your eye on and you would love this opportunity. You're going to view his DM as flattering, sweet, whatever the case may be. All right? He did the same exact thing as those other guys. But you view it differently because of your level of interest in him. This is the same principle that applies to this whole not calling first. If a guy views you calling first as an act of desperation, it's because he doesn't really like you like that. He's not feeling you like that. He might be entertaining this just because he probably, he very likely already saw this as, I, I, like, she's lucky I'm even talking to her. Like, I, I'm just doing this just because pass some time, or you know what, it might be some free action, so let me just do it, right? But if the guy really likes you, he's not thinking desperation, he's thinking hallelujah. <laughs> he's thinking, yes, she called me, I'm happy, she's interested, oh man, I hope this keeps moving forward. Like, he's not going to paint a negative picture on a positive action, plain and simple. And so if a man is going to take something that you do, efforts that you make, and make it bad, that means he is not a good man for you. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. And that's why it's so important 
to separate how the wrong men perceive or or handle your your behaviors and your actions versus what the right man will. All right? What the right what the wrong man won't appreciate, the right man will love. And unfortunately what happens to so many women is because the the reality of life is if you meet 100 men tomorrow, 99 of them ain't for you. And it might take number 50 before you come across the right one, right? But those first 49 or whatever it is, because all of them are not for you, they may not receive your actions in the way that you would want them to. And you fall into a trap, many women, many people, because men do the same thing, of now thinking the action is the problem rather than the person. Let me say that again. You start to think the action is the problem rather than the person. So you start thinking calling him first is what messed it up. Real, not seeing, no, it's who you were calling. Like he just isn't it. He's just not the guy. He's not going to receive it well because he's not built to see and embrace your value and what he has in front of him. But, the, but if you start to think the action is the problem, when you come across the right guy, you no longer do the good action. So now you ain't calling the man who's actually interested. Now you're not pouring into the man who's serious about being with you. And now he falls back and it reinforces your idea of nothing works. These men are never happy. No, no. You stop doing the right things because you kept dealing with the wrong people. And you got to recognize, no, let me just drop those people, but keep doing the right things. So, Bottom line point is this whole desperation because you call, no, if he likes you, that ain't going to happen. All right. Now, before we continue, I want to give you an opportunity to join my special text club. All right. I got a little group where you get these texts every week. There are inspirational messages, a bonus content, some personalized videos where I give you the message that you need for the day. Just some things to really help keep you in a positive mindset, feeding you emotionally and spiritually. It's a great positive experience and it's extremely inexpensive. Like, I mean, super, super. It's only $5 a month. So, and a portion of the proceeds will go to my Healing Generations Foundation, nonprofit organization that seeks to provide uh, both free and affordable coaching and counseling for individuals and so much more. There's so much planned with the foundation. I'm really excited about it. So part of the proceeds from the text club will go to that. So go below, click the link in the description or in the comment section and be sure you join today. All right. So to keep this thing moving, the next reason why they say you should never text a man first is because he may feel like you're invading his privacy. Now, this one really doesn't make sense to me Um, because I don't see how a simple phone call, especially a simple initial phone call, is any way an invasion of privacy. Now, if you call and then your first conversation is an interrogation (laughs) where you're asking them all kinds of personal questions that and you ain't even do the the initial foundational stuff yet all right and that might be a little different but to me i i just don't i just don't think that i just don't see how that would correlate i'm even wondering if i misread the article on this point because i'm like this one doesn't really hit for me but i will say this Again, it's another perfect example of even if there there are scenarios where a man feels like, oh, you're doing too much, you you pushed a little too too far ahead. Again, that is the perception of the man who's not serious about you, who's not generally into you, who's not excited about getting to know you. That's how he will act. The guy who is like he really is interested, he's not gonna view again, he's not gonna paint a negative picture on a positive action, plain and simple. And so I think it's important to understand that you don't need to have these concerns. And and here's the other thing, and and, and it's just an overall point that I want you to understand. When it comes to all this advice that you get online, whether it's from me or from other people, one, you know, I always tell y'all, well, I try to always tell y'all, I always mention it in my books, pray about this advice that you get. 
Just don't accept it and run with it. Go to God. Make sure that this applies to you. This is right. This is this is true, positive, healthy guidance. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's me, because listen, we're human. I don't care who anyone is on the internet. As human beings, we could misspeak. We could we could make a mistake in something that we encourage or or address. And you know, you want to make sure you're re- you're only receiving and taking what truly is going to be best for you. With that said, you got to be true to yourself. And I think a lot of women in their fears of how to navigate the dating experience with men, a lot of times suppress who they really are. This could be suppressed. So if you are naturally the woman who does not mind calling people, initiating conversation, all these different things, be that woman. Don't don't now try to act nonchalant and all cool, like, no, I'm not going to call him, or I'm just going to call every now and then. Because like I always give this funny example of how like, you try to play that cool, I'm not going to call him, right? I'll just let him call me when he's ready. And now you guys are dating for weeks and he's gotten accustomed to this very nonchalant, you don't pressure him about communication, you just let him call you when he's ready, right? And then let's say he gets in a relationship because that's what he's, that's what he's accepting of you. That's what, who he thinks you are. Now you get in the relationship and the real you comes out and the real you wants to hit him up every day who is is all about being on the phone. You want text. You want all of it. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is this coming from? I I didn't sign up for this. Who's this woman? Because she wasn't showing up here before. You see? And so now we just waste each other's time because if you would have been yourself in the beginning, we could have saw if that man was really in alignment with you, if that man was really willing to embrace the level of communication that you desire and that you are happy with. So you got to be real with who you are and what's important to you. And so call when you want to call. You know what I'm saying? And and here's another thing about not calling when deep inside you want to call. All you do is drive yourself crazy. So you sitting here waiting for him to call. And and if he doesn't call right away, for some people, you might be able to play it cool for the day. For some of y'all, every hour is driving you nuts, right? Every minute, it it feels like torture. Just call. Just just, just have the conversation. Like, you're not making things better for yourself by trying to enforce all these rules that conflict with the true nature of your being, all right? Embrace it, be it. And either he likes it or he doesn't. A woman should never call a man first. It's because by doing so, you're giving him too much power. Okay? So, I'm laughing only because it's like, man, I, I just really want the games to stop. And I really want all this unhealthiness to go away because it just causes so many problems and sets people on such in such negative cycles. But anyways, I digress. This whole giving him too much power because you called him and now he has the leverage because it's like, oh, you're into him. And he, listen, again, let's start with what I've been saying all day. And I just have to remind y'all how the man who's serious about you receives it, the right man for you receives it, and how the wrong man receives it is going to be two different things. The wrong man will perceive it as, yes, I got the power and I'm going to take advantage and now I'm going to use this leverage against you, right? Because he was always looking to just manipulate and use you anyway. The man who's genuinely into you is not viewing this as a power play, all right? Again, he's happy that you are showing interest. He's happy that he doesn't have to play this guessing game with you. He's happy with the transparency he can receive with you. He's not going to try to take this in the wrong direction. And you got to understand that building a healthy relationship ain't about who has the power. It's about are we in alignment with each other? Are we willing to make a mutual effort to build a healthy, successful relationship? Now, I said mutual effort because many of you, this whole not calling first plays right into the whole let a man chase you ideology. 
And if you watch enough of my videos, you probably know I don't believe in that. I don't believe in the whole letting a man chase you the same way I don't believe in a woman chasing a man. I don't believe anyone should be chasing anyone. Should be two people pouring into each other, mutual effort, okay? So you got to understand when you're playing this he should chase you game, power game, all this stuff. All you're doing is planting negative seeds. Here's the crazy thing. I will see women or men engage in these tactics, right? And what these tactics basically are, are game playing. Even though you're not doing it with malicious intent, you're still playing games. But then will be offended or call out the other person for what they perceive is playing games. And it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. You playing too. You've been playing. And if you playing from the beginning, don't, don't be surprised when they start playing their games themselves. Because sometimes some individuals are sniffing it out. Meaning, okay, you don't call him first. And some guys are sitting back thinking, wait a minute. She hasn't reached out, nothing. She might be playing a game. You know what? I'm going to play with her. Now, I'm going to wait too, <laughs> okay? And again, it's not healthy. I would never advise them to do it the same way I'm not advising you to do it. But this is what happens a lot of times. Then somebody maybe breaks, finally calls, but now there's already this underlying either tension, insecurity, concern because this game was already being played from the beginning, okay? And so... We, we got to make sure we're setting the stage for what we desire in our relationship. How we start can be how we finish. You start with game plan, you're going to end with game plan. You start with lies and deceit, you're going to end with some lies and deceit. You've got to learn to take a very healthy, positive approach. And if you're struggling with that, ask yourself why. Because a lot of this game playing, whether for men or women, stems from fear. I don't want to be played. I don't want to make the wrong decision because I made that wrong decision before. I gave too much of my time and energy before. And what that says to me is you need to heal. You need to heal so that you'll stop playing games. You need to heal so that you won't be afraid anymore. You need to heal so that you can truly open your heart because a lot of people desire a relationship. They're saying they desire love but they're not truly, fully open to it, all right? Because being fully open to it means being vulnerable. And being vulnerable to an unhealed person can be very scary, all right? So you want to make sure you take the steps necessary to get the healing that you need. You can get my book, Love After Heartbreak. It'll lay out all the steps for you. But Or you go to a therapist or a coach. You, you, get, you, 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 you put in the effort and make the investment to heal so that it can help you eliminate the need to play any of these types of games with anybody. Now, real quick, that, that was one of the last main points, but I actually have an extra thing I want to mention, okay? So, one thing I think people don't consider, and I'm not trying to condone this or make excuses for it, but it's the reality of life. I've seen some situations where a woman meets a man, He's genuinely interested, but something, let's just say he met her Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Saturday night, something goes wrong in his life. It could be somebody passed away. It could be something went wrong with his job, whatever, right? And he is not mentally in the place to try to reach out. Now, again, I'm not saying that's the way he should handle it. I, I, if I'm speaking to that man, I'm going to say, listen... Send her a text or a quick call letting her know, listen, some things came up. I just want you to know I, I need to deal with it. So give me a couple of days, but I do want to talk to you. I am interested. I think that's the right, proper, healthy way to do it. But I understand that not everyone has that understanding of how to handle things in a healthy manner. I understand that a lot of men have a very default uh, mechanism of shutting down when they're dealing with certain things. And not wanting to even speak to that woman they're interested in in a moment where they're feeling weak, they're, they're struggling, they don't know what to do. They don't want to give that energy to her. They don't want to have to talk about with her. They want to try to figure this out and get their mind right before they talk to her. 
So sometimes delays in that first call or whatever is because life happens. All right. And that's why I think it's important to not always jump to a negative conclusion. I'm going to give you one quick personal story. And this is, I, I think this is where I really learned this lesson. This happened to me like first year, I think in college or second year. I don't know. But either way, I met a woman, we were talking and we, we didn't talk on the phone much, but I, I think we, we just agreed to go to the movies or something like that. We we're supposed to go on a date. Anyways, let's say we're supposed to go on a date on Friday. Friday comes. I don't hear from her. Now, let me tell you something about me. <laughs> I don't mind if you cancel on me. Cancel? I don't care what you cancel for. Because to me, life happens. I'm not stressing it. It is what it is. Just let me know. But standing me up? Oh, man. That's, that's like pet peeve. One of the worst things somebody can do. Do not stand me up. Do not waste my time. Well, this was a version of me that had not evolved in certain ways. And when I felt disrespected and offended... I had no problem letting you have it, okay? So here it is. I don't hear from this woman. I call her, left her a message, and I cursed her. I ain't going to lie. It was horrible. I let her have it, okay? I ain't even going to say what I said, but I, it was bad. And all right. And again, it was wrong. It was not the right way to do it, but I did it. Anyways, I remember she hit me up, I want to say, two days after that. And she said, the reason you didn't hear from me was because that day my uh, grandfather passed away. And she was so hurt and she was so offended and like she killed it. And I don't blame her. I completely understand. But it taught me like, don't be so quick to react. Don't be so quick to assume. Give people an opportunity to explain themselves. Granted, I know some people will give you BS and fake stories, but... Better to give the benefit of that when we don't know for sure than to jump to negative conclusions because sometimes life happens, all right? And it's not always someone trying to ignore you or play a game or because they're not interested. Some people struggle with handling certain things occurring in their life. So I think the other thing I'm going to say real quick is this is why it's so important that before you cut someone off or jump to a conclusion, pray about it. Talk to God because God might stop you in that prayer and say, hey, wait a minute. Don't, don't be so quick to jump ship. This is a misunderstanding. This is how you need to handle it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that can help you. I always say pray before you react. That can minimize misunderstandings becoming a lot worse than they had to become. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on men will respect you when they see these five things. is to understand that not every man is built to see your value. So again, like the analogy I gave with the Rolls Royce,